In this video, we'll be looking at the two-dimensional and three-dimensional extent of grids and levels and how to manage them. Here I have a simple Revit model with two building outlines and a number of grids for each building named appropriately to suit each building. If I select on a grid, say A1, you'll notice that at the top and bottom of the grid extents is a hollow circular symbol with the letters and number 3D next to it. This shows that I am selecting the three-dimensional extent of this grid. These three-dimensional extents effectively show the end of the plane in three dimensions and depending on the location of this extent the grid will be seen in any views that cut perpendicular to them such as this plan view and also this section view here. If I select a 3D extent I can see that it has a padlock indicating that it is locked to the extent of the other grids aligned to it. So if I pull it down, it extends the 3D extents of all the other grids. So if I select this section and open it, I can see that the only grids I am seeing are A1 to A5 because if I look in plan, the only grids that have a 3D extents cutting the section are grids A1 to A5. If I were to bring the B grid lines up with the 3D extents, like so, note that I can now see these grids in the section going through building A. So it's important to set out the grids, especially the 3D extents, so that they do not overlap other grid lines for separate buildings. This principle also works in plan. If I go to this section 2 through building A, select grid A3. If I unselect or unlock the 3D extents. This 3D extent is now independent from the rest of the grids. And if I bring this grid down to say below level 4, if I now go and open a level 4 plan, note that grid A3 is now not visible because it is not cutting through the plan view associated to level 4. If I bring the grid back up, note that it automatically snaps to the top of the grids for A1 and 2 and 4 and 5. And if I unclick my mouse button, it automatically locks its position. So when I move this grid again, it now moves all the other grids with it. So that sums up the three-dimensional extent of grids. If for whatever reason I wanted to change the appearance of the grid location on a drawing but did not want to change the 3D extents, I could click on a grid line and if I select on the 3D toggle I can switch to the 2D extents and note now how instead of a hollow circle, I have a small solid dot. And if I drag, selecting the dot, I'm now changing the location of this grid head in this view only. As I'm changing just simply the 2D extents. If I go to level 2, note that the grid is located or the grid head is located aligned to the 3D extents. 
If I go back to level 1, note that the 3D extent can still be seen here with the hollow circle, and I can still select and drag the 3D extents there. However, note that I've only done it for this grid. If I go back to level 2, the 3D extent has moved for this grid only. If I move it back in level 2, it moves back to align to A, B and AA. And if I go back to level 1, the 2D extent remains, but the 3D extent has aligned like so. If I wish to reset the 2D extents on the 3D extent, I simply select the 2D extent and drag it over until it overlaps the 3D extent. Unclick the mouse button and it automatically is then selected the 3D extents, which I can then manipulate like so. So that is the nature of 2D and 3D extents for grids. It's good practice to use an element such as a scope box to lock the grid extents in 3D so that users do not accidentally drag a grid line down thinking they have changed it in 3D. But actually when I then go to sections cutting through building B, I see all the A grids like so. Therefore, what I'll do is create a couple of scope boxes. I'll give this a name, building A. And create it there. And I will then create a new scope box for building B. And create it down here. I can now select the grids for building A and note in the properties under the extents group there is a property called scope box and I can actually associate these grids to a scope box. So I will select building A, click apply. Note now that the grids have actually extended away from the scope box. If I simply select one grid, I can see that the 3D extents is locked to the scope box. So if I change the scope box location, the 3D extent remains aligned to the edge of the scope box. But Revit has automatically created an extended 2D extents to enable me to simply drag these to the location without having to switch to 2D from the 3D extents, like so. If I then wanted to extend these 2D grid locations to my other views, for example, if I go to level 2, I can see that the 2D grids have again extended into building B. I can go back to level 1, select the grids for building A, I can select Propagate Extents, and this will copy to the views I'm selecting here, the 2D grid extents to these other views. Click OK, and if I go to level 2, I can see the 2D extent of the grids has updated and if I go to level 4 the extents have updated likewise. If I go into a section I can see that this scope box has not been drawn to the correct height so I can just simply extend this scope box up and maybe down a little bit and this updates the 3D extents for the grids in section. I'll go ahead and do that for building B as well. Firstly, I need to actually 
associate the grids to the scope box. And then drag the extents inwards. I'll now select the grids, propagate extents, and select the levels like so. And again, go into section and just update the location of the 3D extents. So using scope boxes is a good way of managing the grid 3D extents to ensure that the 3D extent of a grid is not moved to an undesired location. The same principle can be used for levels as well. If I go to section three, I have created an additional set of levels for building B due to the terrain on the site. Building B will need to be at a higher elevation. However, as you can see, these grids have their 3D extents matching and therefore the grid B 3D extents goes through building A. So if I go to the section through building A, I can see the level B2 levels, which is undesirable. Therefore, what I can do, if I just close the other windows and open this section, if I select the level B, level B4, and drag the 3D extents so that they are not going through building A. Note that unfortunately, because the level extents were the same, it's also dragged the level A levels ac across with it, and therefore the levels are now not visible in building A. So unfortunately, I will either need to do this individually by unlocking the constraint for each level B level. And if I do that, I can see level B4 is now only within building B and therefore not visible in the building A section. Or alternatively, I could select all the level or building B levels and assign them to the building B scope box. And if I select on a level, I can see that the 3D extents is fixed to the scope box for building B. And all of them have disappeared from the building A section. Likewise, if I open the section through building B, I want to hide the building A levels. I can simply select the building A levels, change the scope box to building A, and their 3D extents adjusts to snap and lock to the scope box, and they disappear from this building B section. Levels likewise have a 2D and 3D extent. Because I've associated these levels to a scope box, I've automatically got the 2D extent to adjust, like so. But the 2D and 3D extents apply in the same way as the grids. So that is how to control and manage the 2D and 3D extents of levels and grids in a project.